Somebody asked in the Discord server, which is where, you know, you guys can ask questions if you want to see a video made. They asked, you know, what's the difference between RAM, which is, stands for Random Access Memory, and ROM? And, you know, th that's a very good question. It's delicious. So, yeah, obviously, people are thinking, well, you know, why... You know, what is each? What does each one mean, I guess? So the easiest way for me to explain this is by pointing out each parts of the computer that they represent or would be a good example. So, for today's purpose of today's video, sadly I can't take out the RAM out of my computer, sadly, and show you guys. But, basically, RAM is what you use for application tasks, etc. Me being a programmer, I actually know um, a lot about RAM because that's what you use to store a lot of your data on. So, basically, to put it simply, when you use RAM, it's kind of... Um, the more RAM you have, the more room you have for programs, which is probably what you've already heard. Now, the thing about RAM, though, is, you know, when you make it, when a programmer, you know, makes a variable, I don't know if you know what that is, it's basically, you know, a little stored spot that as long as the program is open, as long as the computer is on, it keeps that value, and it's basically like a little storage spot, so it can be like one, two, true, false, etc. There's a bunch of variables, and those are stored in the RAM. And the more, you know, RAM you have and, you know, a program with a lot of variables, that's why, like, programs that do editing and stuff need a whole lot of variables for, you know, like, what is what pixel is here or what renderings, things you have attached, etc. That's why they need a lot of RAM to be able to run through and execute them like that. Um, so, the reason why, that's obviously, why certain programs need a whole lot of RAM. So, you know, that's why, you know, everybody that gets a whole bunch of RAM for their computers, etc. Uh, that also keep in mind though, if you have a lot of RAM, you can also keep other programs open at the same time. Because basically what happens when you run out is you, it's trying to make variables that it doesn't have room for. And it basically crashes. Now ROM on the other hand is something completely different. It's basically solid storage device. Um, so like for example, we have over here, I have a USB drive. Let me make sure this doesn't have stuff on it. Okay, so see this is a USB drive. I mean, you know, see, it's a simple USB drive. This would be an example of ROM. This is actually SSD. Well, this would be classified as SSD storage, which is solid state. It's not a moving disk that you plug in. Meanwhile, over here, actually, no, man, I can't take this out because that's what I'm writing my uh, video recording to. Um, but I have a, a hard drive disk that I have in my computer. I have two. And th those are moving storage that go through and they write. So ROM, in a short sense, is basically what it means is it's storage that you can keep um, you know stuff after this is turned off so obviously this is no power right now but it still has data on it that's the purpose of ROM is that you know when the computer shuts off as if you didn't know RAM actually completely clears when it, you know when there's no power so for uh, you know for example ROM right here uh, this is obviously a very small this is 32 gigabytes which is actually a pretty decent size SSD um, you could classify it as that you can probably boot off of it too but this is an, a solid state, and solid state is faster to retrieve data, so that's why, you know, your operating system and all that kind of stuff is stored on the ROM, uh, your hard drive and stuff, so that way, it can, when it, obviously, when the computer turns off, you don't lose your operating system, etc. So that's obviously a good example is, you know, when you have a, um, and that's why also people prefer SSDs, because they're a lot faster at retrieving the, uh, the data, because all this has to do is just go find the data in the thing, it basically uses, it's really hard to explain, basically goes through and finds the data and just sends it back, meanwhile the disk has to remember where that kind of data would be stored, then it has to go through and track it, then it has to spin the disk around and move the little, um, the reader or writer, I don't know whatever you like to call it, it's a little, it's a little needle that says on the disk, and it spins the disk, and then it moves the disk, or these, the, the needle on the disk around, if you've ever seen a record player, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and it goes through and reads the disc as it's spinning around, and that's basically how you get data off of it. Um, that's why it's a lot slower um, than you know an SSD because the disc can only spin so fast and it can only move so much. Meanwhile, this all has to do is send an electronic signal and get the data, uh, <clears throat> and it doesn't really have to take a whole lot of time to find the data. If you guys enjoyed this explanation, I know. It's, um, also, if you have another question, go down in the description, uh, go down in the comments, and let me know what you guys want to see, what you guys want me to go over, explain. I've gotten some lot of good feedback, and I appreciate everybody who's been watching these. And of course, if you have any other questions, make sure you hit me up in the description. Thank y'all. Check out my channel for any uh, other tech-related of us and stuff. Yeah. Thank you.